Welcome back to Classic Recaps Universal. Today I'll tell you about a movie called Passengers that came out in 2016. It's a mix of science fiction, romance, and drama. But be careful, I might give away some surprises from the story. So, be prepared. A big spaceship called Avalon is traveling through space. It is going to a new planet called Homestead 2 where people will live. There are 258 crew members and 5,000 passengers, all sleeping in special beds called hibernation pods. While traveling, the ship goes through a bunch of rocks and bits in space called an asteroid belt. This damages the ship's shields that protect it. Power is sent to the main shield, but the ship is going to crash into a very big rock called an asteroid. The big asteroid hits the ship and causes some parts to break down. The ship tries to fix itself automatically, but one of the sleeping beds opens up by accident. The person who wakes up is Jim Preston, who is a mechanical engineer. A machine helps Jim wake up fully. The machine tells Jim that he has been sleeping for 120 years. It also says the ship will get to the new planet Homestead 2 in four more months. The machine tells Jim he can enjoy the nice things on the ship for the next four months. It gives Jim instructions about his ID bracelet, his room, and the main activities he should do before reaching the new planet. Jim is excited but also nervous to meet other people on the ship. Jim gets ready and leaves his room. He goes to a classroom that has a hologram teacher meant for a whole group of students. But Jim is the only one there. The hologram explains that Earth has too many people, is too expensive, and is overrated. It tells Jim to save his questions until the end of the lesson. But Jim keeps asking why he is alone. The hologram cannot answer Jim's questions. So Jim goes to search for other people. He goes to the main hallway area of the ship. But nobody is there either. An information desk machine offers to help Jim, but it is also automated. Jim asks to talk to a real person. The machine sends Jim to find a staff member, but there is no one there either. Jim then asks to speak to the captain. When Jim gets to the control room, he cannot go inside, but he can see that none of the main crew are awake either. Jim realizes he is the only one awake on the whole ship. Jim goes to a room with big windows called the observatory. There he finds out the ship is actually 90 years away from the planet Homestead 2, not four months. Jim realizes he woke up from hibernation sleep too early. Jim rushes back to the main hallway area and sends a message back to Earth asking what he should do, since he doesn't know how to go back into hibernation sleep. But the communication system tells Jim that his message to the expensive Earth line will take 55 years to get an answer. Jim is very sad and upset. He walks around and finds the ship's bar area. Jim sees another person there, but something seems strange. When the person goes to get Jim a drink, Jim realizes this person is actually an android robot named Arthur, not a human. Jim wants to ask Arthur for more information, but the android cannot explain how Jim is awake so early before everyone else. The next day, Jim wakes up in his room and goes to the dining area. But he quickly learns that most of the good food on the menu is only for the fancy gold-class passengers. Jim gets a plain coffee and tries to figure out how to fix his hibernation sleep pod so he can go back to sleep. After getting all the tools, he manages to open the pod and lies down inside, but nothing happens, and it doesn't work. Next, Jim decides to use the tools to try to open the crew's hibernation sleep pods, but that doesn't work either. Small problems and errors start happening around the ship. Jim keeps going back to the bar area to drink, but mostly to talk to the android named Arthur. Arthur gives Jim some advice that convinces him to break into one of the fancy, gold-class, rooms to try and have fun on the ship. Jim trees all the restaurants, games, and entertainment systems in the gold-class areas. But as more time passes, Jim becomes even more sad and miserable to be there all alone. One day, Jim gets very drunk. He wanders around the hibernation pod area and stumbles into a room with spacesuits meant for walking outside the ship. Jim puts on a spacesuit and goes into the airlock room. He pulls a lever and then pushes the button to open the outer airlock door. Once outside the ship in space, Jim is amazed by the beautiful view. He is the only human awake to experience that moment. Jim releases the magnets on his boots and floats freely in space, feeling extremely sad and devastated. Jim comes back inside the ship, takes off the spacesuit, but goes back to the airlock room without it. He pulls the lever, ready to end his life, but changes his mind at the last second. He runs back inside and accidentally slips and falls on a bottle. Jim stands up and instantly notices a woman named Aurora in one of the hibernation sleep pods. He looks up her files and listens to her interview recording. 
becoming very interested and attracted to her. Later, Jim sits next to Aurora's pod, still listening to her interviews. Back in the bar, Jim reads some of Aurora's writing work and talks to the android Arthur about her. Jim becomes obsessed with the situation. He came for a better life on a new planet, but woke up too early and may never get there. And he has found his perfect woman, but she is out of reach, still sleeping. Jim keeps thinking about Aurora and gets the idea to wake her up too, so she is no longer out of reach. He discusses this with Arthur, but the android does not understand Jim's difficult situation. If Jim wakes up Aurora for his own benefit, he would be trapping her on the ship with him until they die. At first, Jim decides not to wake her, but as time goes by, he cannot stop thinking about it. One day, Jim changes his mind. He goes to Aurora's hibernation sleep pod and finds a way to activate it and wake her up. As Aurora is waking up and going through the same process Jim went through, he hides and goes back to his room. A little later, Jim goes to the main hallway area, hoping to find Aurora. And there she is, just as confused as Jim was one year ago. Jim tells her they are the only two people awake on the ship. He takes her to the observatory room. Then Jim tells Aurora that he cannot access the crew's hibernation area or the ship's main controls. Aurora freaks out and wants to get back into her sleep pod. When they get there, Jim explains, there is no special equipment to put them back into hibernation sleep, meaning they are trapped and stranded on the ship. They go back to the main area. Jim tells Aurora she should rest since she just woke up from hibernation sleep. Aurora feels sorry for Jim having to spend over a year alone on the ship. Jim goes back to the bar, feeling bad about what he did by waking up Aurora. He asks Arthur the android to not tell Aurora that he was the one who woke her up. The next day, Aurora wakes up. She goes to the main hallway and asks the automated information desk about the hibernation sleep pods. Jim joins her there and they go get breakfast. As they leave, the information desk has some kind of error or malfunction. In the dining area, Aurora realizes Jim has been eating the same plain breakfast for over a year. She gets him a fancy gold class menu instead. They talk about the possibility of fixing the hibernation pods. But unlike Jim, Aurora is not ready to give up yet. She searches through the medical area reads research documents, and eventually tries to break open the doors to the crew's hibernation area. Jim notices more errors and problems happening in different areas of the ship. Sometime later, Aurora feels sad about her life situation on the Avalon ship. She writes, exercises by jogging around the ship and swims in the pool, becoming more and more aware of being trapped. Aurora goes to the dining area to interview Jim, thinking his story might be interesting. She asks why he chose to immigrate to the colony planet. At first, Jim answers Aurora by repeating advertising slogans from the company that owns the ship. But then he explains further that he hoped on the new planet he could be someone important and build a real life for himself. Later, they end up in the observatory room and Aurora finally shares her reason for being on the ship. Unlike the other passengers, Aurora only has a round-trip ticket. Her plan was to go to the new planet Homestead 2, live there for one year, and then come back to Earth. She wanted to be the first journalist ever to do that and write the greatest story. Slowly, Aurora gives up on finding a way to fix their trapped situation. Jim figures out a way to cheer her up. He takes her dancing, to the movie theater, and to the basketball court to have fun. Finally, he takes her to the bar to meet the android Arthur. Aurora relaxes a bit until she remembers their predicament of being stranded. Jim is left alone with Arthur, feeling terrible about what he did by waking up Aurora. The next scene shows Jim working on a project. Then Aurora walks into the observatory and finds that Jim made her a miniature model of the famous Chrysler building. Sometime later, Jim and Aurora go on a date at the bar. They have a nice dinner and share stories about their lives. Aurora tells Jim that her father died when she was a teenager. After dinner, Jim takes Aurora to the airlock room and they put on spacesuits. They go outside the ship for a spacewalk together. Jim finally has someone to share the amazing view of space with Jim turns off the magnets on their boots and they float freely together in outer space. They come back inside the ship and immediately kiss, then go to Jim's room and sleep together. Soon after, they start living like a couple. Aurora moves into Jim's room and writes about her life on the ship. They exercise by jogging together, eat meals together, and sleep together. Jim explores more of the ship and finds an area with plants growing called the Hydroponics Bay. He brings Aurora some flowers from there. One day, the ship passes by a huge red star, so they go to the observatory room to view it. It's Aurora's birthday, 
So later that night, they celebrate at one of the fancy restaurants and then the bar. While Aurora is chatting with Arthur at the bar, Jim goes to the bathroom and gets the ring he made for proposing to Aurora. The android Arthur tells Aurora that Jim intentionally woke her up from hibernation sleep, not realizing Jim wanted to keep that a secret. Suddenly, Jim comes back and Aurora confronts him, extremely shocked and upset. She runs away furious and panicked. Jim goes back to his room to find all of Aurora's belongings are gone. The next day at the dining area, the moment Jim tries speaking to Aurora, she runs away from him again. Aurora feels desperate. One night she goes to Jim's room, punching and kicking him, wanting to kill him for what he did. When Aurora keeps avoiding Jim, he tries apologizing and explaining his actions to her over the room communicators. He tells her he fell in love with her, but Aurora does not care. She cannot forgive Jim for taking away her life. One night, while Jim is in his room, another malfunction happens. The ship experiences a critical error and the main controls shut down. Later, Jim gets into an elevator that also malfunctions. Aurora walks into the main hallway area and sees that Jim has planted a small tree there. Then she goes to the dining area, where the food dispensers are also malfunctioning. Suddenly, Jim and Aurora hear the voice of the deck chief over the room speakers, asking who planted the tree. They both run to the main hallway and see a man named Gus Mancuso standing in front of Jim's tree. They introduce themselves and tell the chief about their situation of being the only ones awake. The chief doesn't understand how three hibernation pods could fail. Mancuso takes them to the control room and discovers something is wrong with the ship, but he has to manually check the system information. When they leave the control room, a robot almost falls on their heads. Jim and Aurora tell Mancuso that these malfunctions have been happening more frequently all over the ship. He says that shouldn't happen and shows them how to collect data on the problems. Mancuso checks on the hibernation pods when Jim joins him there. Jim has figured out what happened with Aurora's pod that woke her up. The deck chief thinks what Jim did is terrible. Later, Mancuso is in the control room checking the collected data when Aurora joins him. They discuss what happened with her pod, but he tells her he cannot do anything about it. Jim walks in carrying the 16th broken robot he has found. Mancuso starts feeling sick from being awake after hibernation sleep, so he goes to rest. But as he walks out, he coughs up blood. That night, Aurora cannot sleep, so she goes for a swim in the pool. Suddenly, there is a loss of gravity all through the ship, and the water from the pool starts floating with Aurora in it, causing her to almost drown. The gravity drive resets, and Aurora barely makes it out alive. Aurora and Jim run into each other while going to find Mancuso. The three of them go to the control room, slowly discovering what has been happening with the ship. Mancuso figures out that something went wrong with a major system on the ship two years ago. They need to find and fix whatever caused this failure, because the entire ship is struggling to work properly. If they don't fix it, the whole vessel will become stranded. They go to find the problem area, but Mancuso faints, so Jim and Aurora take him to the medical room. Mancuso is dying and there are no treatments that can save him or give him more time left. Sometime later, the three meet in the observatory. Mancuso gives Jim his ID bracelet and tells them to fix the ship. Then Mancuso immediately dies. Suddenly, the lights turn an alarming red color and the whole ship starts violently shaking. Jim tells Aurora he needs her help and they run toward the engineering area. But there is another failure with the gravity drive and immediately another failure that affects Arthur the android as well. Jim has to deactivate Arthur. They finally arrive in the engineering room and start looking for the problem. They find it in the power plant area, and when they open the hatch door, Aurora gets pulled in by strong suction. The asteroid had caused a hole breach in the ship's hull in that area. Jim also gets pulled in, but he holds onto the hatch door as it tries to close on him. Eventually, he gets pulled through too, but they quickly manage to seal the breach hole. Right after fixing that problem, Jim realizes there is more than one breach hole in the hull caused by the asteroid. They follow the path of where the asteroid hit and find that it damaged the reactor's control computer. Jim thinks he can find replacement parts for it. They find the part and change it, but the process of venting cooling the reactor still fails. They try doing it manually, but it fails again. Jim figures out he needs to open the exterior vent door from outside the ship so they can properly cool down the reactor. Both of them go to the door that leads outside. As he's getting ready to go out, he gives Aurora a bracelet that belongs to someone else, just in case he doesn't come back. She helps him put on his special clothes, and as he walks into the door that leads outside, 
She asks him to come back because she can't stay on the big boat without him. Aurora goes back to where it's really hot, and something sharp from that place hits her arm. Jim is getting closer to a door from outside and sees it. The place where it's really hot gets even hotter while he tries to open the door. He soon figures out that he needs to hold the door open with his hands so the hot place can get rid of the extra heat, and he tells Aurora about it. She doesn't think it's a good idea, but he goes ahead and tells her to let the heat out. She doesn't want him to get hurt, and they talk loudly, but he says they need to help other people, so she lets the heat out. The plan works, but the smoke from the hot place pushes Jim away and breaks the rope that keeps him connected. The air inside his special clothes is getting lower. He tells Aurora what's happening and she rushes to find another set of clothes for him. He says sorry to her again. She puts on the clothes and flies out to get him, but her rope is too short. She's pulled back, but then she grabs onto his rope and pulls him in. Aurora pulls Jim into the doctor's room, but sadly, he's already gone. She uses a bracelet to make the doctor's machines bring him back to life. The machines do their job and Jim wakes up. Aurora forgives him. Later, she fixes a robot named Arthur, and they say goodbye to someone who passed away by sending their body into space. Jim takes her to the doctor's room and tells her he found a way to use the machines to sleep for a long time. He asks her to sleep in one of the machines for the rest of the trip, but she decides to stay awake with him instead. Jim asks her to marry him, and they spend their lives together on the ship. 88 years later, they reach their destination. The other people on the ship wake up and see the ship in a different condition than they expected. Aurora leaves them a message, telling them about the life she and Jim had on the ship while they were asleep. We hope you enjoyed this recap as much as we did. Remember to subscribe to Classic Recaps Universal for more insightful dives into timeless masterpieces. If you found the narration is good in this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow movie enthusiasts, and drop your thoughts in the comments below.